Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well right now. This is Liz and I'm so excited to be with you this morning on our Passport to Wonder adventure. Now before we get going, I want to make sure that if you want, you can follow along in your very own Bible as we study today's verse. So go ahead in just a minute, you're going to go run and grab your Bible, okay? And I'm going to give you 10 seconds. If you don't have a Bible, that's totally okay. You can just follow along with what I'm doing. But if you do have a Bible, I really want to encourage you to go and grab it and bring it back, okay? You have 10 seconds. Ready? Go. All right, welcome back, friends. If you went and got your Bible, hold it up high. Here's mine. I've had my Bible, this one at least, for about six years now, and I love it. I love to take notes in it and underline verses that I love the most. So I hope that you enjoy your Bible as well. We are going to turn to the book of Deuteronomy today. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I've never even heard of that part of the Bible don't worry. It's in the Old Testament. It's a long, funny name, Deuteronomy. So it's the fifth book of the Bible. So if you look at my Bible, this is the beginning. So it's right towards the beginning. Okay. So go ahead, look for Deuteronomy. It's going to be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy is that fifth book of the Bible. Okay. So I'll give you just a little bit of time to find your way to the book of Deuteronomy. And while we do that, you're specifically going to be looking for Deuteronomy chapter six. So you'll see in my book, it says Deuteronomy up top. And then I know the chapter because it has the big numbers there. So here's chapter five. Here is where chapter six begins. Here's where chapter seven begins. So go ahead, once you find Deuteronomy, find the big number six, and that's where we're going to be. Give me a thumbs up if you have found the book of Deuteronomy and the chapter number six. Awesome. Alrighty, so before we dig into Deuteronomy chapter 6, I like to set the scene a little bit. Whenever I'm going to read the Bible, I think it's so important to know what on earth is going on because sometimes we just enter in the middle of a story and it's so helpful to know who we're talking about, where we are, what's going on. So to set the scene for our verse, we are talking about the people of Israel, and they, being led by Moses, are wandering through the wilderness. Now, an important thing for you guys to know about the people of Israel, they were all about their rules, or you might have heard the word law. They were very into maintaining and keeping the law, and they had lots of laws for everything. You guys might think that you have a strict mom or a strict dad or a strict teacher. My goodness, you would not want to have the Israelites as your mom or your dad or your teacher. There were laws for everything, rules for everything. I want you guys to go ahead and take a few moments and think about what are some of the house rules that you guys have in your family. I know for me, when I was growing up, I was not allowed to have dessert until I at least tried some of every bit of my dinner, even the gross peas that I did not like. Another rule was if we had sandy feet from going to the beach, we had to rinse off outside before we came inside. We could not bring sand into the house. What are some of your guys' house rules? The Israelites had so many rules. Rules about when you were allowed to eat, what you were allowed to eat, who you were allowed to speak to, how many times a day you had to pray. So many rules. In fact, all of Deuteronomy chapter 5 is just a bunch of rules. 
And there's 10 really important ones called the Ten Commandments that God gives his people. And yet, what we're about to read is God's final rule. And he says it's more important than all of the other ones put together. So let's look at this super important rule. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So God says, yes, I have these certain rules for you to keep you happy, to keep you healthy. But above all, the biggest rule is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So what does that even mean? How can we love God with our heart, our soul, and our strength? Well, we're going to look at this together. So go ahead. I want you guys to grab a piece of paper and some type of marker or crayon or pen or pencil, okay? Go ahead, pause the video, go grab those supplies, and come right back for our activity. So first up, it says that God calls us to love him with all of our hearts, right? Our affection, our feelings of love. So go ahead and draw a big circle on your piece of paper. And in the middle of that circle, I want you guys to draw a heart. Okay? Loving God with all of our heart. This means that when we are praying, we can thank God for the things that we love in our lives. This means that when we see things that we love, like sunsets or the ocean or beautiful trees or adorable animals, right? When we have those feelings of love, we can give thanks to God because we know that he created all things beautiful and all things that we love. So here's our heart. Next up. Love the Lord your God with all your soul. So go ahead. You're going to draw another circle. And you're going to see that it overlaps the heart circle a little bit. Now, when I think of our soul, it's our almost our conscience, the core of us. It helps us make our decisions. It helps us make our choices. It's that gut feeling of when you know something is right or wrong. And so to show our soul, I am going to draw a little person's head, right? Because our soul is almost like our mind. It's our intuition. So how do we love God with all of our soul, all of our mind? all of our gut feeling, well, we make sure to include God in every choice we make. When we're deciding how to react to a sibling who maybe hasn't treated us very well or maybe has made us angry, we choose to behave how God does lovingly. When we are deciding what to say to someone and we can say a nice word or a mean word, we think about God and we choose to say something nice, right? With every choice we make, we can choose a good path or a path that maybe can hurt ourselves or other people. And so when we love God with our soul, we are choosing to include God in everything we do. Lastly, we choose to love God with all our strength. So go ahead, do one last circle. And again, you'll see that this last circle I draw overlaps with the heart and the soul. And there's that little triangle right in the middle where they all overlap. So for strength, I am going to draw an arm with a big muscle on it. So my bicep, right? You draw whatever you think of when you think of strength. How do we love God with all our strength? Well, when I think of strength, I think of the breath in my lungs. I think of the fact that my legs can carry me for walks and runs. 
I think of the fact that I have eyes that can see and a mouth that can speak. Our strength is our physical ability that God gives us. And so when we dedicate everything we do to God, we are loving him with all our strength. Maybe you're really talented at soccer. And so when you play on a soccer team, you can treat other people well and be a really good sport and kind to your teammates. And that's loving God with all your strength. Maybe you love singing or you have a musical talent. With everything that you do, you can honor God and love God. And that's how we love God with all our strength. This law that God gives us to love him with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our strength is so important that Jesus actually quotes it in the Gospels. When we look in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we see Jesus telling the people around him that the most important thing we can ever do in our lives is to love God with our hearts, with our souls, and with our strength. And also, he adds a fourth thing. He says to love the people around us, right? And it is only through loving God first with our hearts and our souls and our strength that we then have the power to love other people well. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I hope you enjoy doing the rest of the activities that Miss Jenny has planned for you all. Bye friends. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Of great joy. Of great joy. Of great joy. Of great joy. For all people. I'll pay to For all people. Let's get to work. Well, let's get to work. Now let's get to work.